Rugby's biggest tournament is looming large over everything right now. England will obviously have the power of home support when it starts in September, but on Saturday they travel to Paris for a full-blooded encounter and for Stuart Lancaster to find the answers that he needs before he announces his squad. This is the story of France-England part de welcome. 202 inside line. <laughs> I was coming in my lovely England shirt tonight, but I had to wear this. So. <laughs> uh, Jack Neal, Cornish boy. I think he's going to do us proud tonight. <laughs> we don't understand anything! <laughs> England travelled to Paris looking to make it three wins in a row against France. A fired up French pack on a cutting up Stade de France pitch made for a difficult start for the Red Rose. Some big hits in defence from Luther Burrell and a try saving catch from Mike Brown couldn't stop the home side marching into a 12 0 lead with three penalties. England started to find their feet as the half wore on. Dan Cole with some brilliant work to secure a penalty and George Ford making no mistake from the tee. Ford and Michelac exchanged penalties before the break, leaving England with work to do in the second half to claw their way back in. Stuart Lancaster's side came out with a renewed energy. Mike Brown and Jack Knoll involved as England made good ground into French territory. France held firm though and soon made a break of their own. Johan Uje finding the space to dot down for the hosts. Following a Michelac conversion and another penalty just after the hour, England were left trailing by 19. Danny Cipriani gave them a glimmer of hope on 71 minutes with a try after some strong work from the forwards. And as England's fitness began to show, they found more and more space. Jonathan Joseph going in at the corner with Ford converting superbly from out wide. A courageous effort to make it the length of the pitch from the last play of the game wasn't quite completed. And despite the loss, an impressive last 10 minutes will have left England with plenty of positives. 25-20, the final score in Paris. Big thing for us was our discipline in that first half. Obviously, he kicked 15 points or so in uh, in the space of a few minutes. So, yeah, I think the second half was a lot more positive once we once we focused on the, the penalty side of things. So, uh, yeah, we'll take a lot from that second half. Obviously, look a lot on the first half. Uh, yeah, probably without doubt uh, the proudest moment of my career. Obviously, uh, pretty nervous coming on uh, with with 30 minutes to go, but uh, you know I really enjoyed the experience despite the result. I think once we get told once, obviously we know that the ref is going to be hot on that, and that's what we've got to to listen to because at the end of the day he's going to make the final decision. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of things that we can look at in this next week. Um, obviously a bit of a down week next week, but, yeah, we'll be ready for, for the Ireland game at Twickenham. So, yeah, a lot to pick up from for these two weeks. Yeah, I think we've got to remember that that was our first blowout, um, you know, for a lot of the boys since May. So, uh, yes, there's a lot to work on, but I think there's a lot of positives in that, the way we played in the second half. I think the way we corrected the wrongs of the first half was very, uh, was very positive and, um, you know, we can definitely pick up some momentum off the back of that. Well, certainly... Not what England wanted here in Paris. But let's just put things in perspective for a moment. For most of the players, it was a first international in five months. England's strong finish gives them plenty to work on. And there is still a month to go until the tournament actually starts. One thing is for sure, England will want a big reaction against the Irish at Twickenham in two weeks' time. O2 Inside Line will be right alongside them once again. We'll see you then. <laughs>